next lecture where we're gonna proceed with the image processing part so so far we've uh, figured out what the thresholded image looks like now what we're gonna do is actually find out the contour on that image the contour that we found but before that we have to first detect the edge so let's do that so we're gonna say edge equal to cv2 dot canny image threshold whatever we thresholded canny lower limit canny upper limit and yeah that's it then we will do cv2 dot i am sure we will say edges of the image we're gonna plot edge so let's see what we get so this is what we obtain as the edge of the image it's quite nice to be honest and so what did we start with we started with an image which had or a, or a frame which had my hand a bunch of other things and thanks to the very first step in which we mixed the modes or mixed the signals or mix the channels rather we were able to get rid of all those things we smoothened the image actually even if you don't smoothen the image nothing much changes but it is always a good thing to smooth it okay for finding out contours and all it's always a good idea to have less information then we have two contours one is the uh, two edges one is the outside thing and one is the inside thing so the inside thing it, it comes up because of that reflection of the light nothing else but we'll see once we detect the contours that it, it won't cause a lot of image uh, a lot of issues so now that we found out the edges of the image we're gonna pass the edges to find out the contours well you could have done it directly with the thresholded image as well but regardless so we're gonna do contours hierarchy well you can call them anything you want is equal to cv2 dot find contours you're gonna pass the image from which you want to find then you wanna say return external and you're gonna chain approx none so the find contours function it requires the image then it requires information about how it, you want to return the contour so RDR external means in that image so let me run this so when it's gonna detect these two contours it's gonna give you only the parent contour because inside that parent contour there's a child contour as well so you're gonna remove that contour from the list all right so this is a very important thing you you only want the biggest contour or the enclosing contour if you don't do this you're, you're gonna get this contour as well we don't want that then you do cv2 dot chain approximate so this is the purpose of chain approximate if you have for example a straight line you don't want to save all the all the points on the line you can simply save the two points so if you do chain approx simple you're gonna save the end points you wanna interpolate once you start doing something with it but in, in this case we have a complicated surface so we do chain approx now right, this helps you obtain the various contours not the various contour but the largest contour so now once we know what the contours are we will do cv2 dot um, draw on cv2 dot draw contours then we're gonna plot the contour on the original image so the original image was this right so draw contours on image we're gonna draw the contours we're gonna uh, because there's only one contour so zero means so if you do minus one you're gonna plot all the contours zero is the id of the contour in this case you have only one contour so contour zero is the equivalent of this then you need to specify the color of the contour so color will be specified as um the tuple like this 
and we have to do the line thickness of the contour so it's gonna overlay the contour on the image and show it all right so let me save this and let me see what happens uh, well where, where is the original image Ah, so we need to show the image again cv2 dot i am show image uh, we have to give the name image with contour image all right all right this is great we've detected the contour of the balloon so to 0 to 55 0 means b g r so g so then the color of the contour becomes green in case you want a red contour then you instead of g channel to 255 we're gonna set it to this to 255 so this is gonna make the contour to be red okay this as simple as that so so far what we have done is great we've identified the contour we've plotted the contour now we've also want the area of the contour right so what is the area of the contour so thankfully uh, we have functions which help us in finding out the area the perimeter of the contour so it's cv2 dot contour area contour zero so this is the main contour in case you have other contours you have to give different indices like this but because we have only one contour it's going to be contour zero we also have cv2 dot arc length and we're gonna give contours contours zero all right so these two should give us the area equals percentage f slash t and length equal to percentage f slash n percentage we're gonna call this c a and we're gonna call this c l so then c a comma c l so let's see what happens when we run this let me close all the images ah so the argument is required okay so the arc length also requires another argument which helps in telling whether it's a closed contour or an open contour so if it's a closed contour we have to tell true if it's an open contour we have to say false so the area is this and the arc length is this well great if you divide it by 2 pi you get the projected radius that's fine i'm not going to do that because it's quite trivial to do now what we have to do is to wrap all of this inside a for loop that's it okay we have to now wrap all of this inside a for loop and then we're done sort of okay let me see whether i can invoke matplotlib so import matplotlib dot by plot as plt and x equal to np dot mean space 0 to 1 y equal to x square plt dot plot x comma y so let me see if it executes this in this because in well it doesn't show the plot and that's okay we can dump it to a file we can read the file later on no harm done uh, okay let's not bother with this if you're using spider or something this will be very easy to do so so far so good we have obtained this now we need to wrap everything so in order to wrap everything 
we will have to wrap all of this inside the appropriate program right so forget about this so we're gonna say while true we're gonna take all of this we're gonna indent it all right and instead of writing down area and length we're gonna simply output the percentage f i mean the area and the length this weight key we will make it as one and we're gonna only show the last image we don't want to show the edges and all because in the end the manifestation of all that is through the red contour on the original image so the final image should be showing the balloon with the red contour all right so let's see what happens amazing so you can see that sometimes the internal thing is also showing so we need to find out a way of avoiding that internal thing i mean for the most for most of the part it doesn't really cause an issue huh, perfect so for most of the part it doesn't cause an issue but when it does cause an issue how do you get rid of that well you're printing the contour zeros as such you don't face an error okay so uh, tell you what we're gonna persist with this um now how do you dump it to a file uh, i'm gonna remove this percentage n i'm gonna remove this because i don't want to see the image i just want to look at the values on the command line okay sometimes you do have that small contour appearing All right so let's try to fix that let's try to fix that I'll let this code execute all right so over here we have the contours and the hierarchy now we need to to extract the largest contour okay so before that let us see some whether we can find some common trend when you have the smaller contour the area of that smaller contour is quite small so it's like 1372 1445 1451 and so on so the, the larger contour is significantly larger than the smaller contour so that gives us a clue on how we can isolate the larger contour okay so once we've obtained the contours we're gonna take the contours and convert it to a list so contours equal to list contours after converting it to a list let's take the selected contour let's take the zeroth contour and assign it to a selected contour so in the end the selected contour will be the largest contour but we can assign selected contour default as the zeroth contour so contours zero okay dot copy we're gonna make a copy of it so now for contour in contours that is it will loop over the different ids of the contours we will say if cv2 dot contour area of contour is larger than 2000 then selected contour is equal to contour all right so it means that if that particular contour is having so this is basically initialization of the variable initialization of the variable it has i mean you could do without this as well then once you've initialized if you find a contour in the contours list 
which has an area larger than 2000 you make it as a selected contour well 2000 also i mean you could make it very well as 3000 I mean. well towards the end what is the area let's see we don't want to discard those towards the end it's 21000 so we can make it 3000 as well so then it's the selected contour and once we found this we want to plot only the selected contour so contours comma okay so it turns out when i was using a smaller kernel for the gaussian blur that is a smaller area for the gaussian blur it was giving me a lot of isolated contours as well so let me show you what i mean let me make it make the kernel size as 9 and let me show you the edge detected after making the kernel size 9 um, so let me run this so if you look closely i'm not sure whether i'll be able to zoom it but there's a small contour pocket near this which is not actually joined okay and that gives us a bunch of broken contours which which are not helping our cause so we need to blur it with a larger kernel here in this case it's 21 after blurring we will remove those isolated pockets it's more smooth now okay so let me stop this so let me comment out the okay so what happens is you have the selected contour initialized if the contour area is larger than 2000 you make the contour to be the selected contour then you cast it to the form of an array and you plot the contour on top of the image so this is needed in order to plot the contour which was originally converted to a list so this helps it to convert back to the data structure that the contour is uh, the the draw contour function requires okay so once this is done we should be able to plot the largest contour so let me run this everything seems to be going as per plan wow it's nice silky great all right so now we are getting a bunch of outputs let us pipe that output to a data file so so that later on you can plot it as well so in order to do that we'll put it to out.dat let me stop plotting all this we don't need to plot once we've ascertained what needs to be done So let me clear this file and let me rerun it. So here we have all the areas and the perimeters. Okay, so we can now load this file into Python and plot it as well. So with this in mind, um, we've we've done a very easy problem. We have seen various concepts of blurring, of isolation, uh, of mixing the channels, finding out the edges, finding out the contours. Okay. The important thing is to smoothen out those edges, otherwise, the, there will be small pockets of isolated contours which you do not want. You want a nice single smooth contour. So, before concluding this lecture, let me show you one more application of this for viscous fingering.
so this is a video discourtesy of dr saurav mandal of the chemical engineering department and student pooja singh she is a phd student and so in this experiment viscous fluid is being displaced by a less viscous fluid and the less viscous fluid in this case is water and it's colored pink so as you can imagine the initial um, channel mixing has to be such that the pink has to be more prominent than the background so let us see i've already encoded it with a bit of trial and error the green channel has been biased to minus 2.12 the blue channel has been biased to 0.245 and the red channel has been biased to 1.359 so with the help of this i'm just showing the channel before isolation uh, the mix channel so i'm just showing the mix channel for now okay so let me run this code okay so it takes a bit of time it, the video takes place after 6 seconds so you have to bear with me for <laughs> with for this so let's let's just wait let's see what happens so as you can see the tube is quite prominent because the tube is carrying the liquid now once the liquid is being pushed you should you see that the front is nice and clear and once you threshold this it should be absolutely easy to find out the perimeter of the liquid okay the difficulty is this is an this is this has detached from the the particular sample actually it will give you a bunch of contours so you have to loop over all contours to find out the perimeter i'm not going to do that in this video but maybe someone amongst you can do that but anyway so the point is once you find the appropriate bias of the channel you can easily binarize the image now you can imagine how easy it will be to binarize this image because this is almost white everything is everything else is almost black okay in addition to this because the tube is not moving you can sort of take the initial frame subtract the initial frame from all the frames to remove the tube then you can sort of get a clear image of this fingering setup okay so i'm going to stop this over here so with this we end this particular lecture on image processing i know it's a bit um, power packed but i've shown you all the important sort of workflow there is to most of the image processing problems and i really hope you will find all this very useful special thanks to shreyas darshan professor saurav mundal and pooja singh for contributing to this particular video and the previous one as well so with this i take leave i'll see you again next time bye